Hallelujah. Welcome. So glad you could join us today. Uh, take your seats and open with me in your Bible to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. We will be reading verses 1 through 4. Say amen when you get there. 1 John 1, excuse me, 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Okay? Yeah. Amen. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. <clears throat> Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I humble myself in your presence. Holy Spirit, I cannot do this without you. I am completely and totally dependent upon you, Lord. I ask you to breathe life upon this word. Let me speak your words and your words alone. Give us eyes to hear. I think, yeah, yeah, that would be good. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Let your anointing and your fire be upon me and... Touch every heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, we are discussing the topic of trying the spirits. In order to try the spirits, first we must know what exactly is a spirit. What is a spirit? Number one, a spirit is air. Hmm, that's interesting. The word used for spirit here is pneuma. Every time in uh, in the Greek that the word spirit, uh, the word has been translated spirit is the word pneuma. My first gun ever was a BB gun, a pneumatic rifle. It is an, a rifle that operates from air. Likely, if you own a car, you have struts, pneumatic struts that assist you in raising your hood or the tailgate of your SUV. This word means a current of air that is a blast or a breeze, a spirit. And it can also mean doctrine. When I was a young man, I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day, and I desperately wanted to quit. I didn't know that there was a spirit behind that cigarette that was keeping me addicted to it. My pastor and I, we prayed over cigarettes, and I would go buy more. We placed them on the altar. And I left them there and I would go buy more. We burnt them on the barbecue grill, flushed them down the toilet, anointed them with oil, and uh, tore them up. But I would continually go down the street and buy more because there was a spirit within me. One day I came into church and there was a guest minister there. And she was praying for people before the service started. And I went up to get her to pray for my brother for salvation. And she looked at me and she said, We'll pray for your brother, but let you get, let's get you taken care of first, honey. She said, You have a spirit of addiction in you. You smoke like a chimney. And God's going to set you free right now. She commanded this spirit to leave me, and I want you to know that for about three to five minutes, I vomited, and nothing but air came out of me. 
for days and weeks after that, I was afraid to breathe in smoke of any kind. I remember walking down the street one day and I saw a big dump truck with his diesel blowing black smoke out of the pipe. I held my breath and I walked past it until the smoke cleared because I know it was through the act of inhaling that smoke that that spirit entered into me. I didn't want to give it an open door. Do I think that if it, I had to breathe in that diesel smoke? No, I don't think that would have done it. I think it would have required me to go back to a cigarette and inhale it. But the point is, that's the entry point, was through the inhalation. A spirit is air. Today, <laughs> you know, let me, let me, before I tell you today, when I was a young man, when I smoked, the very first thing that I wanted when I woke up in the morning was a cigarette. The last thing I wanted when I went to bed was a cigarette. I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep and burnt holes in my quilt because I fell asleep with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Today, I cannot stand the smell of a cigarette. When I was with the Christian Motorcyclist Association, at, at times we would go to motorcycle rallies that were held at bars, and we would spend time inside of those bars. And when I would get home, my, I could smell the cigarettes on my clothing. I would go home and take a bath, wash my hair, and I would wake up in the middle of the night sick to my stomach because I could still smell that, that tobacco smoke on my hair, on my body. It was in, in my pores. Somebody that smoked like I did, I can smell them coming from 30 or 40 feet away. And we used to chew gum after smoking a thick cigarette and think we would fool people. <laughs> Number two, what is a spirit? I just said that it can mean doctrine. Ephesians 4.14, and I want you to pay close attention to the way this is said. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. I find it interesting that he uses the word wind there. Wind of doctrine. Spirit is air. What is wind? It is air. You know, interestingly, I looked up the word doctrine. I think I failed to look up the word wind. But the point is, is it was a wind of doctrine or spirit. The word used for doctrine here is not pneuma, though. In fact, uh, pneuma is never used where we see the translation be doctrine. The most uh, often word used for doctrine is didache. And it means instruction or the act of the matter. In other words, teaching, like I'm doing right now. What am I doing when I'm teaching? Air is flowing out of my mouth. In order to teach someone, it requires spoken or written words. You have to breathe to talk. When I was a firefighter, sometimes we would go to a call where someone was hyperventilating. And almost all of them, they're breathing like this. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. One of our paramedics one time looked at a lady and he said, you're breathing better than I am. <laughs> you cannot speak without breathing. In fact, you cannot speak without breathing. If someone chokes, truly choking, I don't mean coughing. If someone is coughing, don't give them the Heimlich maneuver. Don't pat them on the back. Leave them alone. Because if somebody is coughing, <coughs> they are moving air. And that is the act of getting that lodged object to propel out of their mouth. 
It's when they cannot move air that the Heimlich maneuver is necessary. The person will grasp their throat most often and they will be like this. There's no way. They can't make a peep. They can't make a sound because they cannot move air through their throat. So it is necessary to expel air to talk or to teach. Number three, what is spirit? It is life. The Hebrew word for spirit is ra ra'ol. Did I say that right? No, it's ruach. And it means wind, breath, or even a violent exhalation, life, anger, blast, breath, cool, courage, tempest. I find it interesting that the words between the Hebrew and the Greek are so close to each other. Now, in Genesis 1-2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The life of God, the breath of God, the wind of God moved upon the face of the waters. Without spirit, there is no life. When someone died, this is where we get the term from, they gave up the ghost because the spirit left their bodies. And in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, he says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. What is spirit? Number four, it is part of your soul. Your spirit is a part of your soul. In Genesis 2-7, God made man. And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, for breath, he did, not knew, he did not use the word ruach. The word he used there is neshama. But I want you to listen to the meaning of it. This is good. The word means puff. That is wind. Angry or vital. Breath. Remember I said that Spirit can be translated doctrine. Listen to this. Divine inspiration. Intellect. Blast. Breath. Soul. Or spirit. And man became a living soul. Our soul is the third part of our person. It is our mind, our memories, our will, and our emotions. So how do we try the spirits? How do we try the spirits? We put it to the test. Back in our opening text, we said try the spirits. The word try here is dokimezo. And it means to test, approve, allow, discern, examine, Proof. In the 1970s, Alka-Seltzer <clears throat> had a commercial. Try it. You'll like it. Try it. You'll like it. Try it. We have to try. And we don't try something necessarily by just accepting it. There are ways to sample something without... Um, fully taking it in. We, we may sample it by smelling it. You ever heard somebody say that doesn't pass the smell test? We may try it by looking at it and reading what is in it. We may try it maybe by taking a little taste. Any 
doctrine. Any doctrine that we accept has to be able to pass the test of the Word of God. At minimum, you should be able to find two scriptures to back up a teaching. We cannot build doctrines over something that is said one time in the Bible. And why is that? Because sometimes it may have been out of the mouth of a false prophet. We have to find where there are two or more, preferably at least three, witnesses to it. In 2 Corinthians 13.1, Paul says, This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? So, we have to establish it by backing it up with the Word of God. And the, the bottom line is, God's not coming to us with a new doctrine today. Everything He has to say was said from Genesis to Revelation. He's not bringing out some new book. Somebody's not going to find a book in a cave somewhere and say, oh, look what I found. Well, they might say that. But don't you bite into it. Have a little bit more sense. This is the standard that was used for the canonization of Scripture. It had to agree with previously established Scripture. God is not double-minded like men can be. In the 1980s, there was a revival of the whole show Star Trek. And they even wrote a, a song about Star Trek. And it was called, you can Google it or search it on YouTube, Star Trek Across the Universe. Always going forward, never, still can't find reverse. And one of the lines in the song, they, uh, it starts off with, uh, I think it starts off with Captain Kirk and then the follow-up is, I think it's Mr. Spock, but he says, We come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. We come in peace, shoot to kill men. All right, so which is it? Shoot to kill or we come in peace? God does not do that to himself. He is not double-minded. Now, there are dispensations of them, some things. There is a dispensation of judgment. There is a dispensation of grace. And so on and so forth. So you have to understand these things. If you think you found a contradiction in the Word of God, I hate to inform you, but you are wrong. You simply don't understand what you are reading. Because the Word of God and the things of God are spiritually discerned. Which brings me to my next point. Number two. You try the spirits through discernment. Like we just said in my last point. I don't watch everything on live TV. I don't I have a TV antenna. I haven't I haven't watched anything in probably two years, has it been? I think, since we watched a live TV program. I use streaming platforms, primarily YouTube. And I have channels that I'm subscribed to, different things that I watch. I like watching educational things, how-tos and restoration projects. I like to watch documentaries. But I don't click on everything that is there. Because sometimes I see documentaries on online about murderers or mass murderers or serial killers. And the minute I look at them, I get this, ugh, this like, gut feeling that that's wrong. That it's not something that's creepy. You ever see something that gives you a creepy feeling? You need to pay attention to that. Because that's your spirit trying to tell you no. Uh, some people call it a gut check. I call it a check in the spirit. And I'm not going to watch something that creeps me out. Because that could be the very thing that opens up a door. It amazes me. There are uh, movies out, like Freddy Krueger, what is it, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, and all these movies that glorify 
a serial killer. And then people wonder why they have nightmares. Because you have opened up a door for a spirit of fear, maybe even a spirit of victimhood, maybe a spirit of murder. But you've opened the door by watching that garbage. And let me ask you something, men. What door do you think you're opening when you sit and watch pornography? Hello? We can't just ingest everything that comes across our paths. We have to read the label. Babies, <laughs> explore this world by putting everything in their mouth that they come into contact with. If I hand them this remote, it goes right in the mouth. If you hand them car keys, right in the mouth. That is why certain products, toys for children, say do not give to children under this age. This has a choking hazard because babies put everything in their mouth. If they found a dead roach on the floor, guess where it's going? Right in their mouth. Everything you put in your mouth does not belong there. That is why we have to put chemicals in places that babies can't find them and drink them. They see pills, they don't see pills, they see candy. A few nights ago, my wife and I are sitting in the living room. And we had a bottle about a foot tall and probably about four inches in diameter sitting on the table. Well, we're sitting in the living room and suddenly my mother-in-law is in there. Woo! 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 And I'm, I stop what I'm doing, I'm like, check on her, what's going on? And my wife says, oh, honey, she thought this was a smoothie. She took that bottle and poured it into her cup and started to drink it. Folks, it was not a smoothie. It was a bottle of hot sauce. My goodness. But yet, we think that's funny, and it was hilarious. I know it wasn't hilarious that the old lady burned her mouth. <laughs> but I can't stop laughing about it. But how often as Christian, as men and women of God, do we do the same thing by just watching anything that that one-eyed monster called the television puts out? Listening to it, all of the garbage on the radio. You know, I, I can tell you folks, to quote Greg Altman, you can listen to secular radio, and yes, there are a few good songs on there. If you like those songs, go buy them. Go download them. Watch them on YouTube. But don't sit and listen to all of the other garbage that's on that mess. How many of you would agree that there might be a few precious art items in a garbage truck? So I'm going to back a garbage truck up to my living room? and dump it out so I can have a few precious items, but yet my living room is full of garbage. We have to be better than this, people. We have to discern everything that we take in. You don't surely go to the grocery store and just load up on any kind of junk. Or do you? Do you read the label before you take it? We have to discern what we're taking in. This is why it's so important that we have the Holy Spirit. Point number three, and I'm closing with this one. Like I said, it's important that we have the Holy Spirit. Number three, how do we discern? How do we try? Is through Unction or anointing. 1 John 2.26 says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. 
But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Notice he said seduce. Them that seduce you. That word seduce in the Greek is pleneo. And it means cause to roam from safety, truth, or virtue. To go astray, deceive, err, wander, be out of the way. And if you go back a few verses to verse 20, he says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And that word unction is basically the same as the word anointing. It, it is charisma. And the word charisma is where we get the word charisma or charismatic, as most Pentecostal churches are referred to as charismatic. And that word means a smearing which is what anointing is, uh, to anoint something is to smear it with oil. A special endowment of the Holy Spirit, an endowment. Tarry ye in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power from on high. It's the dunamis power of God. That is why, folks, it is so important to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't always have to take the time to get to know someone when you have the Holy Spirit. He gives us discernment. I would love to be able to say the name of this person. I'm not going to. There is a particular par uh, politician around 30-something years ago. The first time I heard his name, I had no idea who he was. Never heard the name before. Didn't know what his political party was. But I'll give you a hint, it was the same political party as mine. And I heard that name and it gave me a nauseating feeling in my stomach. I cringed the first time I heard the name knowing nothing about him. And it was so strong that I changed my political party affiliation. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I was right to do that. I said, I don't want anything to do with this party anymore because of this person. And I knew nothing about him. But then as the years would progress, I was showed that I hit the nail right on the head because I followed that check in my spirit. This is why mothers want to get to know who your friends are. So they can discern this is someone you should be hanging around with. And mothers are very good at this. Mothers, I'm going to tell you, mothers have written the book on discerning people. If your mother tells you something about someone, you just about can take it to the bank. And this is even people who have not been saved are good at this. I have my reasons why I believe that is. I'm not going to go into that now. But folks, we've got to be careful on what we are taking into us. Why? Because there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. You have an enemy that wants to make sure you do not make it into heaven. And I'm not going to sit here and tickle your ears and tell you things that are pleasant. That's not what my job is. My job is to tell you the truth. Have discernment, folks. If you're here today, if you're watching online, and you have never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Today is your day. Don't wait another minute. Don't put it off. Today is the 
day of salvation. Maybe you have made a decision at one time in your life, but you fell away. Today's your day too. I want you to say this prayer with me. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Say this prayer and mean it in your heart. I want you to cry out to God. Father God, I am a sinner. Be merciful to me, God. I know that my sin has separated me from you, Lord. I know that it was my sin <coughs> that put Jesus Christ on that cross. I'm sorry for my sin, God. I repent from my sin. I turn away from my sin, Lord. <coughs> Forgive me. Heal me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on that cross for my sin. I thank you for taking my sin and nailing it to that cross with you. I know that you died and rose from the grave three days later. And that you ascended into heaven. And you are seated at the right hand of God waiting to come back and take your church. Lord Jesus, save me. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And be my soon coming King. In Jesus' name, Amen. Folks, if you said that prayer today, I want to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into the family of God. You are now my brother or my sister. If you said that prayer with us this morning, please put something in the comments and let us know. You can even write a letter to us if you want to, the old-fashioned way. Our address is on the intro to the video. You can Go back, pause it, and write down the address and write us and let us know if you made that decision, folks. Um, if you haven't done so already, take a moment and subscribe. Hit the notifications bell so you know when we put up new content. And until next time, God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you real soon. Hallelujah.